All right, class. Today we're learning about <laughs> teachers. Ah, yes, teachers. The people that hate school more than we do. They wake up every morning and for eight hours a day, they're off teaching us the same useless things about how to read, write, or breathe. There are also those teachers that are really bad at their jobs in multiple ways. First of all, they're the teachers that are extremely mean and yell and never help their students. They always make us want to go home in tears afterwards because of their strictness. I honestly don't know how teachers can hate children so much and yet are so dedicated to their job. All right, you sad excuse for pupils. Everybody flip your books open to page 30-something and stop talking before I get off the dunce hat and paddle. Uh, Mr. nor Miss, I wasn't able to do last night's homework because I didn't really understand. Well, 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 Ugo. I don't give a flying fadoodle if you don't understand. You must take responsibility. You are in charge of your education. Blah, blah, blah. There are teachers like that. There are also teachers that are too nice, and they end up treating us like we're five years old and never do a good job either. I realize that there must be a balance. That balance being the chill teachers. I've had a lot of those. The ones that are only strict when they need to be, but you can still take them seriously. Those are also the teachers you can relate to. Instead of going to the counselor that hates his or her life, you can go to your younger, nicer, and more relatable English teacher and ponder about life together. The chill teachers are nice, but even better are the chill subs. The ones fresh out of college and they have that new teacher smell. They haven't been worn down by us yet. I've actually had long-term subs before and they were chill too. The ones that would stay months when your teacher would have a baby or something. I remember one long-term sub we had back in sixth grade. He was really cool. He had jokes, was tall, and that sometimes was so nice and understanding that we'd consider him an older sibling that was always ashamed of us but never wanted to tell us. So, in other words, a 20-year-old something friend. We called him Mr. Skippy for a really good reason. One time, a motivational speaker came to our school to lecture us about respect and being ourselves or something like that. And to try and let our anger and frustration go, he made our substitute skip around the whole gym. Like a monkey. But more recently was our science long-term sub. Of course, we had a nickname for him too, but this was an inside joke between me, Sam, and another kid. Good old Mr. Six. See, it all started when he assigned us a test, which I knew I was going to do well on. But instead, he got a 6 out of 10, and the rest of us had done better than Ugana. For the first time ever, we were so happy that Mr. Perfect Grades finally failed. And up until Thanksgiving break, all they'd say to me was, You know what's worse than this and that? My grades. Soon after, we eventually started calling out stupid mistakes everyone made. And whenever you do something drastically stupid, we call you a sick. Good times. So basically, if you were insulted with the word six, that means you did something stupid or compared, or was even dumber than getting a six out of ten on a test, even when you do well all the time because you mixed up a couple of words. Thanks for the explanation, you six. Anyway, we ended up calling him a six for not knowing what page to flip to after 2 p.m. in the afternoon and doing that four times already throughout the day. And we've been calling him that since. But there's been times I've had fun with teachers without giving them a nickname. I remember this one time in both my science and English class, we were given surveys on how the teachers could improve on their teaching. I believe that they were doing great, so I put sarcasm in the written response area. I said on my science survey and my English survey that I needed a new way to focus. I said I needed a motivational unicorn to look at whenever I'm in need, to be able to push through tough times. And wouldn't you know, they both bought large posters with majestic unicorns on it. And in my English class, we decided to name him Princess Jeffrey III. Jeffrey got me through all of 7th grade, and it's still up in both rooms to this day. I hope your legend lives on, Jeffo buddy. And it was with that same science teacher that we would watch Netflix at home and then come back to school the next day to fangirl over the show we watched. I had to wait for her to catch up because she, you know, has a life. Before, I mentioned teachers being strict when necessary, and one of those chill teacher strictness literally made me scared to death just so I could live up to their expectations. This teacher, oh man. 
gave us a book to read. It was Fahrenheit 451, a book about a guy that's a fireman, but in this weird future, they actually burn down houses containing books because they're illegal. Ugh, that summary itself made me want to fall asleep. Anyway, within two days I lost the book, and I had to find it. In the last half hour of the school day, we have this thing designated to reading, and during that time, my teacher let me search the school to find the book. You all remember Jill, a good friend of mine, but not good enough to be in the group of my four best friends that are always in my videos. Hey, that's mean. Well, she came with me to help look for the book, just to get out of class, and we still couldn't find it, so we had to face our fears and tell our English teacher. We stood outside the teacher's door for like five minutes having a pep talk to brace myself. And the teacher noticed us and she was like, you guys can come in now. And we went in and I was like a nervous wreck. They were kids in her class presenting at the time and the whole class just stared at the two of us. And then finally we approached her. It went a little something like this. I, uh, I did a stupid, which was, I, uh, lost a book. What was this book? A book that has to do with the temperature that books burn? And then I went on and on, keep in mind her entire class was staring at us while this happened. I don't know how it happened. I had it, then I lost it. We just spent the last 20 minutes looking for it, and I even had to bring Jill for emotional support. Honestly, you should have brought more people. And then she had to address her students. Uh... Um, you guys can hold on a second. I'm trying to frighten my student. <laughs> you guys can take a break. But in the end, she wasn't mad, and she said that I had to look for it or replace it, and luckily the book was found and returned before I got to school the next morning. I should really be more careful when it comes to stuff, because soon teachers are going to stop sympathizing me for my stupidity. So remember, kids, it's important to stay responsible and careful. So what did we learn today, Sam? Don't be a six.